excuse. Uh, which are, no, it does. And you see what you're doing now is that I'm actually responding to your claim, to your statement. Okay. I'm kind of arguing it, and you're not willing to take it in. You're just going somewhere else. Okay. The chapter that was missing, which was about a goat eating that chapter. When we say that Jesus is a son of God. We don't mean to say that Jesus is a physical son of God. It's called spiritual preeminence. Hear me out. What we mean to say is that the consciousness of God, which we cannot understand, was materialized and was spoken into existence. Just like you have a word and a consciousness, right? God speaks to his word. He creates everything. He builds everything to his word. But you're the one who just no, made three statements, bro. I mean, do you know how debate works? Look, brother, you ask me, ask my question, correct? My question is, let's talk about the Bible, correct? So what about the Bible? How about you, you ask a question? The Bible was revealed by who according to Christians? It was inspired by the Holy It was inspired by the Holy Spirit. We have every right to film. If you want to be on camera, you can walk off. How would can we not like to be on camera? You can walk away. Okay. All right. So the guy asked me. So so the brother asked me. Okay. So who was the, the Bible revealed by? The Bible is revealed, was revealed by and uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Forty men wrote. Forty men. Forty men wrote under under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Right. It's funny that he's asking that question because again. You know, the Sahaba wrote by their own hands when they got revelations from on high. So we did exactly the same. No, 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 we got it. Yes, they did for 23 years, bro. You're not letting me talk. You see, you made an objection. Let me counter argue that statement that you just made right there, all right? So you asked me, who was it inspired by? And I said, by the Holy Spirit. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. 40 men wrote from different continents, never meeting. And yet it was flowing naturally because they got their inspiration from God himself, spoken, speaking over their lives, and they wrote with their pen. Now, how is that different from the 23 years worth of rough right Muhammad and the Sahabas getting revelations from on high writing down also revelations every time they got a single one they put it in manuscripts right and so it's the same exact thing you can't you can't use an argument against us that's called fallacy if you're not going to use it against your own religion first all right the Bible oh, now you're going somewhere else. That, no, that wasn't your question. No, my, my question was the Bible revealed by God. So if it's revealed by God, how come there's so many versions of it? And versions that differ extremely a lot. Okay. You said, how come we have so many versions? Okay. If you know anything about the Koine Greek, all right, in Hebrew, right, you can't transliterate them directly into English or any other given language around the world so easily because they're all presentation languages. They're different, different, uh, they're difficult dialects to translate. And so what we have is we have versions that are called thought for thought in word for word. In other words, for someone that is a new beginner, right, in the faith, you give them the, the, the thought for thought just so they understand and, and, and don't get confused with the complexity of the original language, which was the Greek, the Koine Greek originally, which is which is, which is why we have all these versions. So that's to that's answer your question. If I had to go a notch further, what I'd say is the following, is that although we have all these different versions, and it doesn't matter, right, is that the context, God bless you, sir. God bless you. Bless you. Allah, baby, Allah, baby. You're talking about Allah. 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 Anyways, so that's how they get hyped up. You see, it's like the religion is all about hype, you know, about reciting and hyping, hype, hyping each other up. That's crazy, man. That's what your religion stands on. It's, it's just so funny. Anyway, so, okay, back to what I said, my statement, all right? Objecting to what you just said, you don't know how to debate, brother. But again, let me just prove you wrong. So we have many versions, all right? And if you're speaking about Jehovah Witness versions and other transliter transliterations that don't make any sense, those were already debunked, and these don't make any sense right at all. They were debunked and refuted as, are you listening? Because I'm talking to you right now. I mean, if you're not going to have the discussion, I can move on to someone else. All right, but you decided, you chose to come up to me. You chose to come up and ask a question. All right, so I don't think that she's even filming you at this point. She's not recording you, bro. You, you can't, you can't do that, man. That's 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 public space, and I am allowed to record on public space. No, well, I'm trying to educate people, and and I do have a channel, just like any other person out there, right? Whether the whether they're Muslims or Christians. So I don't think that that should be an issue at all, right? I have a channel on my own, and I release most of my stuff on on the YouTube channel. Hey, how you doing? All right, so I'm gonna move somewhere else, bro, because you're obviously not listening, and I'm just gonna maximize the time I have with someone else before I leave. So I have a question. Ask your question. So the Jews, they don't believe in the Bible, right? Who said that? Jesus was a Jew, and the first Christians were Jews. Okay, but, but because the, don't even know they the New Testament religion. was oh. the... Sorry, are you, are you talking about him? No, no, no. 
Are you talking about me? No, not you. All right. So the guy asked a question. You said, okay. You said, you said. Can you please rephrase the question so we can hear it again? Let me see. So the Jews, they don't believe in the Bible because it is not in their. Who said that? Where are you getting that from? Let me finish that. Can I hold it? I'm gonna hold it. So the Jews, they don't, they don't look at the Bible because it's not in their religion. What do you mean they don't look at the Bible? Finish my my statement. So in that case. If the Jewish, they don't look at the Bible because it's new to them. So why you don't look at this and say that this is this is the final testament? We have the Old Testament, the New Testament, and now this is episode three of the testament. This confirms the Bible and this confirms the the Jewish uh, Bible. What's your name, by the way, brother? All right, Hassan. My name is Hassan. Oh, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu al Masih. So, you know, the brother asked a question, I believe, listen, I'm just going to, I'm not going to hold you, I'm not going to hold you, I'm not going to hold it against you because I think that you said it uh, very uh, ignorantly, but but the, the, your statement, you said, first of all, you said you wanted to ask a question, which ended up actually turning into a statement more so than actually a question. And second, the statement that you made is really flawed because the Jews have a Bible. It's called, their book is called the Bible. It's not the same one. No, it is the same. We actually read the Old and the New Testament combined. So both the Old and New Testament actually make up the Bible. Hey, brother, can you can you let her film and not not you know not not try to? Yeah. Well, Jesus was a Jew, bro. What do you mean? The first Christians were Jews that that believe on Jesus, that confess Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, and they became Christian Jews. Jesus came for the for the lost tribe of Israel. They were all Jews. It's illegal to talk about Jesus in Israel because the Jews. Yeah, but there there are seven hundred thousand Jews at, at, at this moment that are Christians. They're called Messianic Jews. They're Jews that have you know figured that Jesus was the Messiah, that have put their trust in Jesus, and today walk in the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have adhered to Christianity as Jews that are called now Messianic Jews. Yeah. Go, go, go look it up, bro. Go look it up. I don't know what you're talking about because the, the, the Bible that we have today is, is, is consists of the Old and New Testament combined together. So we have the portion, which is the Old Testament, which is, you know, the old alliance that was made with the people of Israel. And then we have the new alliance that was made not just with the Jews, but also the Gentiles. So you'd have to read your Bible to understand, you know, a little bit uh, uh, deeper about the context. But if you're just asking questions because you just hear and then regurgitate, that's not going to help, bro. So I would invite you, honestly, you know, to go read about this. Look it up on the internet if you have to. Go and search it up and read a lot of stuff about what the Jews believe in, what Christians believe in. But ultimately, we have the same Bible, but with an added portion, which is the New Testament, which is that covenant that was made, you know, with us through Jesus Christ. That's all it is, bro. So then which one is the real Bible? What do you mean, which which one is, is, is the real Bible? You just mentioned, like, two different Bibles. No, they're one Bible. They're one Bible. Okay, let me reiterate again. So they're one Bible. One has the promise that was made to Israel in the past through Abraham. That was a covenant that God made with the people of Israel, right? Through Abraham that would have a descendants that is called the people of Israel. And then when the new covenant was actually established, it was through Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah, that would come and bring that first covenant into full uh, fulfillment. That's all I mean, Israel. So the Bible that we hold in our hands today, that we carry, that we read, is a Bible that the Jews have, plus an extra additional covenant that is called the new covenant that was made through Jesus Christ as a savior. The difference is that us Jews and Christians that believe in Jesus, we have believed in this new covenant, this additional new covenant, but it's one single out Bible, bro. You guys, if you're going to point me, if you're going to point out that we have different Bibles, well, you guys have something that doesn't have the Mosaic law in it. You don't have the Old Testament. You don't have the New Testament. You have something completely new and out of scope. Uh, that is not that can even back that can't even be backed up by the old or new testament. Where do you see the old or new testament anywhere in your Quran? Nowhere. You guys go as far as saying that Jesus never, you know, never claimed that he was God, and, and that is the distortion of the new covenant. And then you guys say that you have the Mosaic law in it, but yet you don't have the Ten Commandments anywhere showing in the in the Quran. Nowhere. If you point me to Ten Commandments, you know what? I'll give you whatever you want. Show me the Ten Commandments anywhere written in the Quran. One single statement or citation. Just show me anywhere in the Quran. The Ten Commandments. Give me the Ten Commandments. In one single place, give me Ten Commandments. That's the Mosaic law. 
Sister, the world, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You can go anywhere you want. You can go anywhere you want. Anyways, we're gonna have to leave. God bless you, brother. Appreciate your. Uh, you know, you look. You look like you're. Uh, you look. You look like you're. You're a good human being, and and you sound interested, man. But I'd say, listen, stay away from this, bro. Put your trust in Jesus, man. Place your trust in Jesus Christ. What do you want to say? One, one person at a time, if you don't mind. Yeah, but I said, show me where it's it's all in one, one place. One place. I said one place. But where? Where? But I said one place. This is not one place. You have chapter 47, chapter 42, chapter 14, chapter 2, chapter 17, chapter 24. These are all different chapters. Exactly. But what, where, where? But where? I said one place. That's what I said. Okay. So you, you basically, you, you basically went, you, you, you pulled them out from all, all these different books. I get it. Yeah. But, but what is, what is, once again, okay? Why don't you guys stick to the old and new testament? Why do you go to the Quran? How do you know that? Astaghfirullah. So these are these are these are these are your these are the you know these are the Muslims are these the Muslims are these part of your community? Is, is that what it is? Is that what it is? So so who who was teaching the guy? Who was teaching the guy the the, the, the foul language? You know, but who, who who taught the guy you know to to speak to speak uh, words like that? The Harvard University where they found that the original text is from Paul, Matthew, and everything. They were all not the originals, and they were all corrupted. It's so easy to stand here and just come up with anything, honestly. It is so easy. I can prove to you from your own Quran that the Bible is not even corrupt. Would you want me to prove it to you? Would you want me to prove it to you? No, but show me from the Quran. Where does it say that the Bible that we hold in our hands today has been distorted at any point in time? Where do you read in your Quran, right, a statement where it says that the Bible that the Christians hold on to or the Jews, which they judge by, was stained and distorted. It is no longer the same, you know, Bible that used to used to used to to be in the past. Okay. So, why why should I show you in the Quran if you don't believe in it? First of all. And the University of Harvard proved it scientifically without any religious um, context. They just did a research in history and they took the original uh, papers and everything and they proved it was corrupted and changed. Let me just, and, and listen, I want to say, I, I want to say that I, I appreciate your humbleness and I appreciate your courtesy, honestly, I'm not even kidding, out of all these people here that were, you know, the so-called Muslims, uh, except for this brother and yourself. I like having discussions with people that are courteous and respectful, right? But you said, you know, why would you point out things from the Quran if you don't believe in the Quran in the first place? Now, unlike, hey brother, I'm going to ask you to stop, man. There's, there's, there's people, there's, there's, there's girls and there's people, man. Come on, why are you being disrespectful, man? Then don't spit it out. Be smart about it. Be wise. All right. So that's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so I'm gonna define that. So you said because I don't believe in the Quran now, as as opposed as Muslims, I don't claim that the Quran was never written. I don't say that. A lot of Muslims, and that's a statement, by the way, that you just made. In fact, you said, listen, the, the, the Bible that you guys have today was corrupt. It was distorted. Now we don't believe that the, the Quran was distorted. We believe that it was written as it was. We just don't believe in it as it was revealed from God as authentic and as perfectly uh, as, as perfectly reliable you see that's a difference all right but 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 on the other hand I find it ironic that you guys would use that statement when you quote the Bible and say well the Bible says this or Jesus never mentioned that he was God whether Jesus mentioned that he he said you know worship me or whatever right and to go back to what you said is that that it's corrupt right that's an ideology sister just please hear me out I'm an ex-Muslim so so I know I, I came out of this for a reason all right as well so so it was the 11th century when the Muslims had to actually fight back by giving some type of, obje of, of objection. And then they said, listen, hey, look, uh, the, the Bible was corrupt. The Bible was changed. But nowhere in the Quran does it say that. As a matter of fact, it says the opposite. Allah himself, and I can show you where from, right? Allah says to Muhammad, ask the Jews and the Christians in the Arabic Peninsula. That was in the 7th century. That if they have to, if they have to judge by, by a book, let them judge by their own book because it is a full-on, complete revelation. So in that case, what this... this
time. Yeah, but, but, again, but again, so by the 7th century at that time, that means that by the 7th century, the Bible that we have was still reliable, that it was still preserved, that it was authentic. So once again, if I have to go, but let me finish, sister. But can you let me finish? One, one person at a time. So, so once again, if I, how do I know that that Bible was not corrupt? Well, again, we have hundreds of, of manuscripts, thousands of manuscripts that actually date back to the Arabic Peninsula in the 7th century. We take those, we compare them to what we have today, and there's not a single change. So if it was, if, if it was changed by the 7th century, then how come what we have today? It was translated. So what? Even if it was translated? It was trans a translation of a translation of a translation. Of a translation. But, but that's what you hear people saying to you. We have, we have, we have codexes. There's only one Quran. Sister, we have codexes. We have we have Codex Sinaiticus. We have Codex uh, Vaticanus. We have other codexes which I'm not real. I don't know the, the full name, but these are codexes that made up for all these manuscripts brought together. And if they were changed, when they were when were they changed? When were they changed? If they were if they were changed, how come the, the Bible is is the book that is is the most sold out around the world today? And if you get all these manuscripts, all these different versions, the context is still the same at 99 percent. The only difference is in the in the grammatical. You know issues, uh, which are, no, it does. And you see what you're doing now is that I'm actually responding to your claim, to your statement. Okay. I'm kind of arguing it, and you're not willing to take it in. You're just going somewhere else. So, so I'm not gonna go to the Quran and how many, how many mistakes there were in the beginning, right? Oh, come on, you guys were were lied to. You were deceived. There's even a chapter. There's an entire chapter that was missing, which was about a goat eating that chapter, which was about holy suckling. Read it in your hadith. It's not even the Quran, but go to the hadith because you can't be a, a Muslim except you uh, you believe the Quran in the hadith altogether. You see, to be a to be a sunnah, you have to you have to believe the sunnah of Rasul uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as you say, right? Right. So, so, so basically, you're gonna take the Quran and you're gonna merge it with the Sunna, the Hadith, right? And that's gonna make up for what exactly? For you being a Muslim. But in your own Hadith, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim says that Aisha narrates that there was a, an entire chapter that was eaten eaten by a goat, and that was about the suckling. So, if a man sucked on a woman's breast, I can pull it out for you right now. Can you pull it out? Uh, can you pull it out? Pull it out, please. Or give me my phone. Give me my phone. If I show it to you from your own books. If you want from your own hadith, sahih, authentic, well, would you believe it? Yeah, can I answer? I'll believe it, but then, um, if did, she, did the goat ate the chapter, the only existent written chapter, or because the... Is, is Aisha Umm al muminin yes or not? Yes. Okay. yes. So she's someone that you deem important and valuable, no, don't you, right? Yes. Is she not, uh, was she not uh, uh, the Prophet's uh, wife? Okay, if she narrates out of her own words verbatim, that there was a there was a chapter, an entire chapter that was eaten by a goat, right? And that that chapter claimed that there's 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 a holy suckling, right? W would you believe it? I'll believe it if you tell me that that was the only copy of that chapter. It doesn't mean because I can go and eat the Quran right now, and there would be still other Qurans. What does it say? So, so what's the point of, of of relying on your hadiths then, or any of these things? I mean, if you're always going to find an argument out. Of uh, you know any topic we bring up. But that's that's the I'm just I'm just showing that the argument you're using that has no point because if there was many other strict uh, copies, it wouldn't matter if a goat would eat one of them. What's the point? No, no, no. What I'm trying to say is that back then, right before the Bible was completely compiled, before uh, Asman and Afan, you know, brought all these. The sorry, the Quran. Excuse me. Before the Quran was completely compiled, you had different Qurans, right? And so. Oh my gosh, you guys don't know your religion. I'm so I'm so flabbergasted. It's crazy. Osman and Afan burned eight. Not because exactly. So he kept one. But you can't say you can't say that. I'll tell you why. Because some of them were missing and other ones other ones had, had many other chapters. So from that perspective, that state of point that standpoint, your your argument doesn't make any sense anymore. I'll ask you a question. Then how do you explain that there's only one version of the Quran nowadays? No, that's not true. There's different ahruf. There's different readings. There's different kira'ats you know, with different words that don't mean the same thing. No, it's not. You see, even if I gave you that reasoning right now, you wouldn't accept it. You won't take it in. No, it's not. Okay, how about we, we, we stay in touch?
you take my phone number or take my wife's phone number if you want to, and let's do this respectfully because I appreciate you actually coming over. No, I'm not gonna have a word with you, bro. No, you know what? Why I'm not gonna have a word because you were very disrespectful earlier. Because you asked me to not preach against uh, uh, my religion yeah, against any other religion. You give me a word with you. Brother, Let's don't. Go. Okay, let me let me ask you a question. Do you guys have Dawah people preaching uh, their Quran everywhere around the world in every nation? Do they have? Do you have people in your religion preaching your religion openly? on the mic, in the streets, yes. in front of everybody to hear, all over the world. Do you or you don't? Yes. So why do you have something against a man preaching his religion no, was in the street? You was insulted. You said I am an ex and you insulted that. I said I'm an ex-Muslim. So, yeah, you, you, so, you so what? You, you said so what? You said they're wrong. You insulted. Give me a word to talk with you. So Brother, you can explain I'm, this. I'm, a, I'm an ex-Muslim. Okay. So what? I'm so going to hold the mic. Yeah. Okay, don't worry. So, what? so you said, you said in front of all these people, you was talking, you saying Jesus is a... Can I hold the mic? Uh, don't worry, I'm not breaking. No, no, I know. I just, I just, I just, so you were saying that Jesus is not, it's not, it's not a human. That's what you were saying, right? So what? Did I, did I commit a murder because no, I said no, that no, that no, Christianity no, believes no, that Jesus is the wine? That's what I believe. It's not. I mean, it's, it's no, it's. So you, it's also right. Bro, bro, let me finish. Let me finish. So you just can you go? Can you go? Yeah. So you were saying that Jesus is not a human, right? You were saying that Jesus is a God. But Jesus is not a God because he's a human. According to who? According well, to you. So how do you know? According so, to the Quran. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that Jesus has different titles in many religions. But in our belief, right, he is the truth, the way, and the life. He is God incarnate. He is the image of the Father, the invisible God that we don't see. And that he is the, he's the glory of God as well. That's what we believe in. You don't believe in that. So, because according to your Quran, from how you were raised, how you were brought up, how you were thought, right? This is what you know from what you read, what you were, you know, thought. But we don't, we don't believe that. So what's your, what's your problem? No, I have not, I'm just saying. Right? I was saying to you, said something wrong in front of these people. So you was talking that Jesus is a God. God doesn't resemble to His creature. That's what we we say. Because one second. But let me hold my mic, Russ. I won't how you just snatch it out of my hand? <laughs> okay. So, so you was, you was saying that. Jesus is a God. I'm saying to you, Jesus is not a God. He's a prophet. He's a human like everybody. He is a prophet and he is not a God. God doesn't resemble to his creation. Because if he resembles to his creation, how are we gonna be God? He's gonna weak. Anybody is a human who have hands and they have bodies, they are weak, they have a blood, they can't die. Let me ask you a question. Is God tangible? Is, is he material? No. He's not, right? No. Is, is God seen? Is God seen? No. Is God all powerful? Yes. All hearing? Yes. All seeing? Yes. So he's omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. Is yes. he not? Yes. That's part of his nature, of his character, of his essence. And all that encompasses around that. Right? So if God is unlimited, all right? Okay, now coming down to humans, are you limited? Yes. Okay, so how can you understand God with your, uh, with, with your three and a half pound brain then, in that case? Because everybody died before me. Nobody stayed. Wait a second. Everybody died. So, so this is what I'm trying to say. is so that Because say, God is substance, so say, God is not matter. What we say is that when we say that Jesus is a son of God, we don't mean to say that Jesus is a physical son of God. It's called spiritual preeminence. Hear me out. What we mean to say is that the consciousness of God, which we cannot understand, was materialized and was spoken into existence. Just like you have a word and a consciousness, right? God speaks through His Word. He creates everything. He builds everything through His Word. The entire world was created by the Word which He spoke in time. And so what we mean to say is that the Son of God, Jesus, which is the Word of God that was in God, part of Him, because your Word is part of you, just like God's Word is part of Him, was spoken in time, and God revealed Himself in a body. Now, is God the body? No, He's not. He's the fullness of His glory inside of the body, inside of that vessel that came through Jesus Christ to walk this earth. That's what we have to say. And so what we say is that... You're a human, you're dependent on human things, right? Physic metaphysically speaking, you're very limited. God is outside of these things. He's not encompassed or refrained or restricted to time, space, matter. He's outside of his creation while being in his creation. And so God decided to take a form of a man. What problem is there? Because he is God. And he can do anything you want. So you're gonna you're gonna come and tell me I'm gonna limit God and tell him what to do and what not to do. If you do that, then God is no longer God. You're God. You become your own God and your pride. That's what you did. Anybody who is weak, anybody who has a body, he is weak, who have bodies and blood and make so give birth. And you said you that, you will change, they gave birth. How you gave birth? How, how, how somebody give birth to a human when he's not a human? Okay. Explain this to me, please, one second. 
So how human give birth to a human when he is not a human? That's impossible. With the mindset, it's impossible. There is no way. Why are you talking it. about your mindset? Yeah. Yeah. Can you give me my mind? Bro? Can, you it's mind? can I get my mind back? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want me to talk. So. Uh, can, can I just object to that and then I ask in five minutes and I'm done. I have to go. All right. We have a Bible study tonight to glorify the Lord Most High. Hallelujah. Okay. So I got to say this. You said, how can, a, how can God have a body? that is weak, that does all these things that man do, right? Which is, first of all, uh, being birthed out, out, of a, out of a womb, for example, or going to the uh, uh, toilet, or doing this, eating, for example, or sleeping. You guys have an issue. You seem to have an issue with that, Muslims, right? So, so once again, going again, going again to what I said earlier, I said God is spirit, and we worship Him in spirit and in truth. If God is spirit, He is not the physical body, but He can come into His creation and fulfill Himself or take over a body, a vessel, which, we, which He did through Jesus Christ. So it's not the body that is taking over or overcoming or overtaking. It is the spirit of God that overtakes and takes over and dominates and controls, brother. So that's where you have it wrong according to Islam. Because you're narrow-minded. You can see past that. God is spirit. Come on. So following up to what you said, how come that in the Bible, Jesus is always talking about God in the... And uh, the third person, I think, can you say in English? Yeah. And he's never associating himself with God and always separating. That's not true. Uh, That's not true. I can quote you I on, on top of my mind. I just didn't finish. Uh, he's always making a difference between him and God. And there's a cit citation here with all the tr possible translations. And there's always a difference between Jesus and God. So how come if the Spirit... I could understand the the metaphor you're doing with the spirit and the body and like the trinity i could understand that even though i disagree like saying that jesus has the spirit of god and he just took like a physical um like a fit like the physical image of a human but he is still god then i would just ask like why are why in the bible there's always a differentiation between jesus and god and when jesus is speaking he never speaks as god or saying that i am god or worship me he says worship worship your lord and go back to your lord well good question I appreciate, no 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 she i gotta i gotta check for that so thank you for that i appreciate that okay there is there's there is a, a distinctiveness between you right as a human being but you know what i'll go even further there's a distinctiveness between the spirit and the soul that is inside of you and the word that comes out of your mouth, right? Now, because the word is not life in itself, it is not life in the spirit and the soul that reside in you, it doesn't mean that it's not part of you. It's still, you know, it still reveals your consciousness, who you are as a human being. Uh, when you speak your word, we're able to, you know, to know you more, whether you're a trustworthy person or not, for example, right? People can actually relate to you through your word that is spoken in time that comes out of your mouth. Now, the word is not quite the source, but it comes from the source, and the word cannot be disso dissociated from you. So that's the example that we give, is that the word was made flesh, and dwell among us as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth for the glory of the Father. The word reveals the consciousness of God who we cannot see, but the word, although it is not, you know, it is not God the Father, it's still coming out from the source, which is God the Father, thus revealing the character, the nature of God, whom we have been separated from for, for a long time because of sin. Now Jesus was materialized. That's why the Bible says that the world became flesh. Now the world became flesh because when God creates, when God builds, He says, even your Quran, kun fayakun, be and so it is. Anything that He creates, well, that's what it means, yes. Kun fayakun, so, uh, uh, sorry, uh, be and so it is. Right? So God creates everything through His Word that comes forth from His mouth, revealing His, his nature, revealing also His character, and His consciousness. That's, that's the only way that humans, human beings would, would understand God. And so when Jesus spoke about the Father, He spoke from a hypostatic nature as well. What is a hypostatic nature? Simply the fact that Jesus was not just human, fully human, but also fully divine. In Him, right, the Father lived, but the Father is not limited, as you said earlier, from a, from, from a single place. So the Father could be in Jesus, reconciling the world to Him, to Jesus, but also be everywhere because God is omnipotent and omnipresent. Just like God, for example, would hear your prayer right here, and He would hear another Muslim, for example, in China or some other country, because God is not limited to time, space, and matter. And in fact, Jesus goes as far as saying, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus said, I was forever, I was dead, and I am forever alive. 
and I hold in my hand the keys of death in Hades. Jesus said, all dominion and power were given unto me by the Father. All dominion and power. Jesus said, if you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sins and you will go to hell. Jesus said, I am the judge of the world. Jesus said, I will judge all men and on my voice all will rise and stand before me, right? Jesus said that he was, he was, he didn't have to say that he was God. Just like you don't have to go around and say, listen, I'm married all the time. But people worship him. That was inconceivable for anyone to ever worship Jesus. Every time he healed someone or did something, people were prostrate in front of him. And worship, according to the Jews, deserved death. Sister, it even says in the Bible, the Jews picked up stones to, to kill him because he made himself equal to God. I don't know what, you know, what. Uh, I don't know how much clearer this could this could be. That Jesus made himself equal to God. He rose people from the dead. And he rose from the dead. And he sat on high. And the Bible said he was he was made the name that is exalted above all the names. The Bible says that he's everlasting. From everlasting past to everlasting future. And him alone is the savior of the world. And when you get judged, you see Jesus. So maybe you got this wrong and everybody else. And maybe Jesus is the one to consider as God Almighty. Amen? I, oh my one, God, second, one second, one second, please. Please, one second. So you're saying that Jesus is a spirit from God, right? So another spirit, right? It's apart from him. That's what you're saying. True? Yeah. 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 So that's what you say. So a spirit from a spirit. So this so you mean I didn't say I didn't say that. I, I, I said listen, I'll give you an example so you don't understand it. Think about a fountain of water, right? First thing.